This short video will walk you through the process of creating and deploying a test in Blackboard Learn. You can use the Tests, Surveys, and Pools tool in Blackboard to create a test within a content area, a folder, or a learning module. You can name a test object whatever you like, for example, test, quiz, or exam. I'm doing this demonstration from inside a learning module. I'll open the learning module, and then to get started, I'll click the Assessments button and select Test. Notice that from this screen, I can create a new test, or I can add a link to an existing test, one that I had already created. However, you can only create a link to a test in one location in your course. For this example, I'm going to click the Create button and then I'll name my test. Be sure to use a consistent naming convention for all of your tests and quizzes. I'm going to have a series of quizzes in my course, so I'm going to name this Unit 2 Quiz. You can also enter a short description as well as test instructions if you wish. Once you're done, click Submit. Now you'll be on the Test Canvas window. If you need to change the title or the description or the instructions for the test, for example, if you notice that you made a typo, just click this little drop down and select Edit. If you like, you can add questions to your test right now, or you can come back to this later on. To manually add questions, just click the Create Question button and then select the question type that you wish to add. For example, I'll select Calculated Formula. If this question type is new to you and you want to be sure you know how a question needs to be formatted or how it will be graded, click the More Help link at the top of the form. This will open a little dialog box that will give you all the information you need about creating that question type. I'm going to cancel out of this and quickly create a true-false question. Note that you don't need to enter a question title at all. I'm just entering my question text. And an important note here, if you have questions in a Microsoft Word document, we strongly recommend that you don't copy and paste that text directly from Microsoft Word. This can bring in junk code that can negatively impact your test. Instead, paste the text from a Word document into a text editor, like Notepad, and then reselect and copy it from the text editor into the Blackboard content editor. This will strip out any unwanted junk code. Now, if I scroll down, I'll see that by default my answer is true, so I'm going to change it to false. If you like, you can enter feedback that the student will see after the scores and feedback are released to the student. Scrolling down a little further, I see that I have other properties, such as categories and keywords, that I can assign to a question. Now I'll click Submit. The question that was created now appears in the test. If I chose, I could continue to manually create questions by clicking the Create Question button once again. In addition to manually adding questions, you can also click Reuse Question, and you can find questions that are in other tests or pools, which you can add to your test, or you can create question sets or random blocks. Question sets and random blocks enable instructors to identify a collection of questions retrieved from selected tests or pools. For more information, please see separate resources on these topics. If you click Upload Questions, you can browse to an Excel or CSV file that contains your questions and upload them right into your test. For information on how to do this, visit the Blackboard Help website and search on Uploading Questions. Once you have finished adding questions to your test, click the OK button at the bottom right. You'll be back in the Create Test window, and the test that you just created will be selected in the Add an Existing Test box. Click Submit. Now you'll be in the Test Options window. Be sure to carefully review each of the settings you'll find here. First and foremost, notice that by default, your new test is not available to students. 
To make it available, you must click the Yes button. Here are a few tips on some of the settings that follow on this window. If you allow your students multiple attempts, only one of the test scores will count. So you'll probably want to select either highest grade or perhaps the average of graded attempts as the score which will display and be used for grade calculations. On my test, I'm not selecting this because students will only get one attempt. It's recommended that you do not select the force completion checkbox unless your students are taking the test in a proctored setting. Students who are taking a test online who accidentally close the test window can't reopen it to complete the test if force completion has been selected. If you're going to set a test timer, it's recommended that you use the auto submit set to on as well. This is the equivalent of turn your papers over and put your pencils down. When the students run out of time, Blackboard automatically saves and submits their test. You can set your display after and display until dates for your test here. The test availability exceptions enable instructors to specify specific date and time exceptions for individual students. For example, I'll click Add User and Group. For this student, I'll click Submit after selecting them. And now I want to give this student 90 minutes instead of 60 minutes to take the test. For more information on using test availability exceptions, visit help.blackboard.com and search on Test and Survey Options. Entering a due date for your test will automatically add a link to the test on the Blackboard Calendar tool. By default, the test scores are included in the Grade Center score calculations. You also have a number of different options for when and how much feedback you wish to release to students. If you're using question sets or random blocks in your test, don't select randomized questions, since if either of those options are used, the questions are randomized anyway. Once you're done with your settings, click Submit. If you ever need to modify these options, it's easy to do. Click the drop-down next to the title of the test and select Edit the Test Options. You can edit the test questions by selecting Edit the Test from this drop-down as well. Notice that your new test appears at the bottom of the list of items that are already in the learning module or the folder or content area where you created it. Now you can drag and drop it to the correct location. There might be times when you will wish to navigate directly to all of your tests in the Tests, Surveys, and Pools tool. You can go directly to this tool and see all of your tests by going to the Control Panel and selecting Course Tools. Then click the Tests, Surveys, and Pools link. Now I'll click Tests, and all of the tests that I've created for this course appear here. Notice that you can build new tests you can import tests that have been packaged from other courses or from publishers. If you click the drop-down to the right of the test title, you can edit the test questions, export the test, copy it, delete it, or run an item analysis report. For more information on how to build tests in your Blackboard course, please contact your local educational technology or Blackboard support staff.